didn't expect to be standing here again in my lifetime. What does it feel like to be standing here? My head's spinning a little bit right now, to be honest, but uh, they're getting me caught up. But why'd you decide to come back and do it? Oh, man, Coach Danielson's a good salesman. I'm sure it's a good future for Boise State recruiting. He's a, he's a good recruiter. When you, when you retired a year ago, you, know, you, you said you, know, you were done and you, know, you, were, you were out coaching. You know, what was it going to take for you to be pulled back in? I didn't think about it like that. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I had no plans to do it. I mean, I had, I had plenty of other opportunities, but... Just not in this city. You said you were, you know, part of the process uh, at least early on, you know, and giving feedback or what, you know, talking about candidates, whatever. When, when did that kind of switch to you were a candidate yourself? Well, <laughs> I mean, Spencer started asking me the first day, and then he showed me his list of about 30, 30 plus people. So, uh, you know, every every time. We were talking about different guys, and I was in on some of the Zoom interviews. I mean, he'd ask me again, <laughs> again every day, and I, you know, he just he was persistent in it. He Spencer did a really good job of knowing what he was looking for and sticking to his guns, which is a good sign for him long term. Uh, you know, we I thought we had some good candidates on that list. And uh, but you know those are all head coaching decisions. I mean, he's Spencer's been been making <laughs> making a lot of a lot of good moves since he took over. Uh, you know, just like I said day one. So my my respect for him, my respect for the Boise State program and the tradition of it. I mean, I'm that's just a part of my life forever. Uh, and then. You know, I've worked with three of the four full-time offensive coaches here before, uh, the, the three of the four assistants on offense, and they have a really good offensive staff here, a good coaching staff in general. Uh, so I knew I knew I could work seamlessly with those guys. And then, you know, they sh there's a good team coming back, you know, the players. So, I mean, it's a, it's a short-term commitment by me, and uh, that's it. Part of the process, I mean, part of the job description, it sounds like it's, it's working with Nate, working with Matt, and trying to get those guys ready to, to, to become you one day. Uh, how enticing was that for you? Well, that, I mean, not, not, not necessarily enticing to me, although I think those guys are really good. Uh, that, was, that was just something that Spencer added to it. Then, uh, you know, that's, that's really, yeah, that really wasn't part of it for me. Bring to the quarterbacks. You've got a lot of quarterbacks in the room that haven't had a whole lot of experience. So yeah. this spring, what what do you think is your biggest uh, ability to help them get better? Well, that you know, helping those guys get better that'll be individually on you know obviously, but you know, if the, there's six guys in that quarterback room, and I've really only seen two of them throw a football. So you know, I've seen some of them on tape throw it, but see them live and. You know, we're we're taking we're taking the Boise State offense from last year, using a majority of of the terminology and the the scheme from that. But we're adding a few things uh, that I like. And I mean, the bottom line is, what well, we we have to find multiple quarterbacks, more than one, who can help us win in the fall. And uh, so it's hard with that with that many. And uh, you know, there has to be a pecking order to start that could change on a daily basis. And, you know, my my job is just to help them have the best opportunity to show what they can do. I talked to Spencer. I asked Spencer about this in terms of, you know, when you were here last time, your job was just to win a football game on Saturday. Yeah. Um, how much do you enjoy as part of your job developing quarterbacks Monday through Friday? Yeah, we – the last time – because it was such a short turnaround, you know, I didn't, I didn't mess with those guys mechanically too much. So when we came back this time, you know, we just said we're going to start from scratch. We want you guys to all do it a certain way. And once, you know, once you have a proven quarterback, 
then there becomes some flexibility playing off their strengths and weaknesses. And, you know, we've seen that here. Taylor Green was a different type of quarterback than, you know, some other guys. Uh, so it's different for them. You know, like I'm, I am set in my ways on some things. I have, I have changed in some. They're just doing a lot more. You know, this this offense has evolved from Tim Plow to me to Bush. Now, now back. But those other assistants have been up there, and this this uh, offense has got a lot more stuff in it than it used to. We're a really good running team. We've got a great running back. We've got a we've got a strong old line with you know four starters coming back. So. I don't know. I'm rambling. I forgot the question. <laughs> what do you see in Malachi? I haven't seen him throw football except on tape. So I'm not, I'm, you know, too early for me to say anything on that. You know, you mentioned being a short-term commitment. I know last time you joked that when all the other coaches would go recruiting, you'd go play golf and drink Coors Light. Uh, I mean, do you, <laughs> is it, are you going to be involved at all in the recruiting this, is this again now? Or is this, are you kind of seeing this again yeah. as just helping this team win this year? Yeah, I'm not going to be an off, off-campus recruiter. And Coach D and those guys are working working through that. I, I will be involved in on-campus recruiting. And for this next class, I will help in evaluating quarterbacks as needed. But when you get a new quarterback, whether it's you draft somebody or a situation like this, what are some of the early items on your checklist that you have that you want to get done? Well, so when, you know, spring football starts on Monday and uh, – I mean, the object of any quarterback is to move the football team and score points. And so when we're, we're trying, as we said earlier, we got six guys and we're we're trying to figure out who can play and who. But we can't. The quarterback position can't hold back the other ten guys on offense. I mean, they got a lot of experienced guys and some some new and exciting guys that have come in. But uh, yeah, it's tricky to get get the right amount of reps, but. You know, we're ultimately just just building towards the fall, uh, but we can't slow other guys down because the quarterbacks aren't ready. That's it's just uh, tricky in the scripting and who goes with what group and what plays. You know, I want to give these guys a chance to show what they can do. They're not just bogged down with terminology. We've got three or four guys in that room that probably know know this offense right now better than I do, but uh, that, that doesn't mean they're going to be the starting quarterback. Uh, how about the unknown? And you said you haven't seen Malachi throw. I know you've seen Maddox throw. And I know that you know, when you were here previously, you thought pretty highly of him. So yep. does, what, what do you know about Maddox? And how does he make that room better, whether, whether he's QB1, 2, or whatever? You know? Yeah, well, I, th- I think the thing about that is uh, Maddox showed that he could do it out there last year on the blue. I mean, Maddox has won games on the blue. He's the only guy, only quarterback here that's done that. So, uh I was a fan of his before, and I'm I'm still a fan of his. So, uh, you know, he's he's going to be limited, very limited this spring. Uh, still coming off the injury, but he's he's progressed, he's progressed quickly, faster than expected. Uh, but that's going to also give those other guys opportunity. I think the bowl game start for Tiller helped him. I mean, if he hadn't started that game, he'd have played zero games basically. Had to play a full game against UCLA. What do you think that experience would help? Yeah, I think it has to help. I think it has to help. You know, it's it's rough on your on your first start when you go against a defense that good. I mean, you know, they that defense kind of woke up at halftime, and uh, you know, the second half, he CJ was certainly under a lot of duress. Uh, that's that's got to help him in his preparation preparation, and then knowing the speed of the game, uh, for sure. But you know, we'll just have to see how that goes. You said most of the playbook is set. There's some things that are important to you that you want to add. What, without getting too deep into the weeds, what what is important for you to add? Well, it's, def- it's definitely not set. I mean, it's definitely not set. But like they, uh, Nate Potter is the run game coordinator. Tim Keen, uh, those guys. The run game is a lot more sophisticated than it used to be, and rightfully so. I mean. This is a run-first football team, so if you can run the football, your chance to be explosive in the passing game comes from play action. That's that's one thing I think I can really help in the play action game. And uh, it's hard to be a good play action team if you're not a good running team. But we, we already know we're going to be a, good, a good running team. You stepped, you, know, you stepped away for whatever it was, a little over a year. Um, what, 
like, what did you miss about it? Like, what, what, are the, what are the little things about football that you just like, you get so much joy walking through the door? Well, once, once Whitetail closed down in October, <laughs> uh, I mean, I came to, I still came to practice at least once a week. And, uh, it, you know, I was still watching the tape on my iPad at home. I mean, I was, I was still watching the tape and Bush and I were in communication you know, I was communicating with Bush all the time. I was still technically an analyst. It just, you know, I was doing it all from home or I'd come to practice. But Bush and I had a lot of communication. I mean, the, the main thing that, I mean, you miss, you miss the games for sure. I mean, the competition part and the games, that you can't replace that anywhere else. Golf, golf doesn't replace that. Uh, and then once you get back, I mean, once you come back, I mean, the... Uh, being around the players, I mean, being around the players is uh, those those guys are fun to be around, and uh, you know, just the whole the whole tradition here. And Spencer has done an awesome job at not only building on that, but adding his own spin on that on it. And uh, that's just something that's important to me going back to 1998. What's impressed you most over the last year when you look at Ashton and you know just kind of how he's contributed even more to the offense? Well, what's impressed me in the off-season program is he how much he's developed as a leader. I mean, he's he's speaks up out there, and obviously he he showed his true colors by making the commitment to stay here because you know he could be making more money than all of us going somewhere else, and I'm sure he'll have another round of that coming up. But uh, I've said from day one, Ashton reminds me of Maurice Jones-Drew. Uh, I think that's a great comparison because he can do everything. He can obviously run the ball, he can block, he can catch. So now we're finding out, you know, as he, you know, he's been in a two-headed backfield the last couple of years with George, but now he, you know, he's he's the man, and he was a man a man for a lot of the time this year as well, this last year. But uh, you know, his his yards after contact are off the charts. Uh, his, his just his feel, you know, his just his ability to to break tackles and take guys. They were yesterday. Uh, Jimmy, the running back coach, was showing a, a ball protection tape for the for the whole team for the whole team to watch as we start spring ball. And like all in one run, it showed him doing everything a running back needs to do. You know, covering up the ball in traffic, breaking a tackle, stiff arming a dude, outrunning another guy. Like this guy's just a really good football player who will who will be playing in the NFL. And you know, let's uh, let's enjoy it while we can. Do you have to be careful with him in the spring, or yeah. is it just full speed? No, no, you got to be careful for sure. Limited reps, and it's not like he needs a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, you, you just got to be smart, and that's the it's that's that's easier said than done for sure. Uh, but yeah, there. You know, there really isn't, you don't really need to see him getting tackled out there too often. Last one. Prince Strawn um, kind of fits the mold of receivers you've had, the yeah. NFL and McAllister. You've had a lot of success for receivers, Strawn yeah. in particular, but just as a group, that's a pretty no, good I'm, option. No, I'm really, I'm really impressed with him. And when you see him, like when I saw him for the first time, just when I was watching practice once, and you see what he looks like now, like that's, that's what they're supposed to look like. Uh, He's got the right mentality for it. Uh, actually, I hooked him up last week for a phone call with him and Chris Godwin from the Bucks. And, uh, you know, uh, Prince's brother already plays in the NFL. But this guy wants to get better. Uh, I, I'm, I'm excited about that receiver room. I mean, there's a couple guys that have been added that, uh, you know, are going to make it even better. But I, I think that's going to be a good group, you know, with Latrell Capels coming back and, He's had a really good offseason. Austin Bolt's another guy that's going to be be in the mix there. But uh, yeah, Prince, that's what they're supposed to look like. Uh, just I think Chris, uh, I think both uh, I think both Chris Godwin and Mike Evans, just the type of pros they are, and like uh, Prince is hug hungry to learn, and uh, you know like guys that want more, you should give them more. You know more than more than we just give them here. If they if they want more and uh, they have questions to ask guys that are playing in the league right now and we have the ability to make that happen, we should do it. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.